Hi, I'm Mitsuki. I live in Tokyo, Japan, and I'm the most caring and loyal friend you'll ever have. People think I'm shy because of how I look and how my voice is so soft and quiet, and for the most part, that's true. When it comes to me, I don't like making a lot of trouble or a lot of noise. I just like hanging out with my friends and eating good sushi and being totally peaceful. But if you mess with someone I love, all the peace is gone and my heart burned like a thousand flaming suns and I'll become a monster. And that's where my story begins. But if you want to hear it, you have to like and subscribe. <laughs> just kidding. Before that fateful day when everything changed, I was just a normal, peaceful girl who lived with her parents and did my best in school. Though that wasn't always very good. The kids all knew not to mess with my friends because I would lose my mind and yell and scream and make their life horrible until they apologized. But when they did, I would just say thank you and go back to normal. I had no idea this little quirk of mine would change my life forever. I was on my way to meet my friends at the public garden on the bridge when I saw four guys surrounding them. But the guys all had their backs to me, so all I could see were my friends' faces, and they looked so distressed. I swear my friend Miyumi was about to cry. My head boiled and my cheeks turned red. I ran up to them, already yelling. What are you doing to my friends, you jerks? Get away from us! I panted like a dog, totally out of breath. The guys were all stunned, their eyes wide and mouths dropped open. Then Miyumi tapped me on the shoulder and said, Itsuki, they weren't picking on us. Then why were you about to cry? And you, Akari, I saw your face too. Don't defend these jerks. I know what I saw. Um, excuse me. I'm so sorry. We weren't harassing your friends. We were just talking to them. Oh yeah? Then why? Suddenly, I couldn't breathe. I saw his face, and all the air went out of my lungs. The rage in my heart became utter humiliation, and I wanted to crawl into a hole and never come out. It was... I'm Aoki, and they were just trying to get an autograph. These are my bandmates behind me. I swear, we weren't doing anything bad. I could barely hear a word he said because all I could think about were the millions of times I danced with my friends in my living room to their videos. It was Aoki from the band Take Back Time, the biggest, most popular band in all of Japan and almost the whole world. When he saw me freeze up, he smiled. <laughs> Don't worry. It was really brave of you to stand up for your friends like that. We have to go to prepare for our show tonight, but why don't you guys come? Look, I always carry extra tickets just in case I meet cool people like you guys before a show. And if you want to come backstage after, just say this to the security guard and they'll let you in. He gave me a paper with the words Abracadabra Aoki sent me. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I like your courage. Maybe we'll write a song about it one day. They left and my friends screamed with joy, but I couldn't even think about going. I was so embarrassed. How could I do that? Yelling at someone just for being nice? And to the pop group I loved the most. While we went to eat and my friends couldn't stop talking about going to the concert, I just kept replaying the moment over and over in my head. Except every time I pictured it, it got worse and worse in my imagination. I even started to believe I pushed him off the bridge and into the water. It's silky, relax. That never happened. Plus, it was your crazy defensiveness that got him to give us the tickets in the first place. I'm not going. What? Are you crazy? This is the chance of a lifetime. We get to go backstage. Yeah, and I get to face Aoki again, my hero who I've idolized since I was in middle school. Except now, instead of meeting him like I always imagined, he'll always think of me as the crazy girl who punched him and made him cry. That didn't even happen. Well, that's what I remember, and you can't change my mind. So no, I won't go. I'll stay home and eat ice cream and cry. That night, I was home, eating ice cream and crying. When my phone dinged with a text message from a number I didn't recognize, all the message said was, outside. I looked out my window and there he was, the black SUV parked behind him. I assumed in case anyone saw him and he had to run away. I thought maybe I was dreaming, but nope. It was real. Even in my house, I couldn't hide from my embarrassment. I opened the window. I don't have makeup on. I can't come out. How did you find me? I asked your friends when they came backstage. I just want to talk. I wanted to talk to you. Talk to me about what? Come down and I'll tell you. <sighs> I took a deep breath, got myself as ready as I could with such a short amount of time, and went out to meet him. 
Even now, after doing a whole show for hours of dancing and sweating, he looked perfect. I can't believe you came here. Don't you hate me after I yelled at you for no reason? Hate you? I think you're the coolest person I've ever met. I think your idea of cool and my idea of cool are two very different ideas of cool. <laughs> he laughed. I wasn't even sure I'd made a joke. What did you want to talk about? Before we get to that, do you want to go to the beach? Now? It's the middle of the night. I know, but when I'm on tour, I almost never have time to go. Today was my only chance, but I wanted to see you, and I figured this way, we could do both. So, I went to the beach, in the middle of the night, with a pop star. I guess I still wasn't sure this wasn't a dream. But on the way, we talked about regular things, like how he missed school and what TV shows we liked. And he asked me a lot about myself, and I just blabbed on and on. And by the time we got to the beach, I actually almost forgot he was famous. He was just a normal boy in my eyes. We sat on the shore, the stars shining, and it was so beautiful, except it was freezing. I tried not to shiver. I didn't want him to think I was uncomfortable and that we had to leave, but I couldn't help it when he asked me. Are you cold? No. I stuttered, my teeth clattering. He took off his jacket and gave it to me. Finally, I could relax and enjoy being there. What I wanted to say to you is, I admire you. Me? Why? For yelling at you and making a total fool of myself? Yeah, actually. I'm kind of kidding, but the truth is, my whole life, I could never stand up for myself. I've always been so reserved and shy and, if I'm being honest, scared. But because of what you did, I finally had the courage to stand up to our manager tonight. He has been terrible to me and the others for years. And because of you, we're free of him now. I didn't know what to say. I had no idea being myself and just defending my friends could have such an impact on someone's life like that. We walked along the beach, and as we talked some more, I couldn't believe how funny he was. And then, out of nowhere, it started snowing. We had been so busy talking, we didn't even notice it got cloudy. He took my hand while we stood there, watching the snowflakes fall. I looked him in the eye. Thank you for taking me out tonight. I'm having a really good time. Everyone thinks I'm so happy all the time because of what I do, but to be honest, sometimes all I want to do is talk to someone, connect to someone who doesn't see me as just part of their job. No one has ever said thank you for just spending time with me. I'm sorry to hear that. Those people don't realize how lucky they are to have you. He looked into my eyes, and that tiny little moment suddenly became an endless ocean. He leaned in to kiss me. I closed my eyes. I couldn't believe it. My first kiss was going to be with the biggest pop star in the world. Then, a wave washed over our feet and I screamed from the cold. He <laughs> laughed, and I did too. And then suddenly, a warm light fell over me. It was pink and yellow and purple, and I realized it was the sunrise. We had been there all night. Oh no, I'm going to get in so much trouble with my parents. He got me back home as soon as he could. When he parked in front of my house, he said, if you ever want to come to my concert again, text me and I'll get you in. And use those words and come backstage to visit me. I leaned over and kissed him. The kiss made time stand still all over again. I swear in that moment, even the sunlight froze. When I pulled away, I was a little embarrassed. I'd done it without even thinking. I wondered what he would say. He just smiled and said, The bravest girl I know. Finally, I went home. But my parents were already awake, and they were furious with me. I apologized, but I couldn't help but smile, which only made them angrier. They sent me to my room and said I was grounded for a whole week. But that was fine with me. For the next few days, all I did was write about that night. I texted with him as much as I could. He even told me about life on the road, the interviews and film premieres and concerts he was going to, and even asked me to FaceTime. <laughs> wow. While I'm locked in my tiny room with nothing to do, you're out traveling the world, meeting famous people, singing to thousands, and watching movies that haven't even come out yet. That's all true. I met all my heroes, and every night I sing to thousands of girls who wish they could marry me, and none of it means anything. What do you mean? Of course it does. You're making such a difference in people's lives. You make them so happy with your music, and I know the people who meet you love you. I don't want to sound ungrateful. I love my life. 
I worked very hard to get here, but the truth is, out of all the amazing nights I've experienced, just sitting with you and talking on the beach under the stars was the best, most unforgettable night of my life. And then he got quiet and looked so sad it made me want to cry. And that's when I knew, I'm never going to see you again, am I? After the Japan tour, we're going straight to America, then Australia, and then England. I won't be back here for another two years. I realized this conversation was going to be our goodbye. It was the hardest thing I have ever had to do. But I knew it wouldn't work with us, and I thought it would be much more meaningful if we stopped talking on purpose rather than just slowly falling out of touch over time. As much as I tried not to, I couldn't help it. Tears began just falling from my eyes, and he cried too. I wanted to say so much. I wanted to promise that we would meet again one day. But I knew with him being so busy and me going to college soon and having to work so hard, it wouldn't be possible. So I said the only thing I could think of in the moment, the only thing that was true, I'll never forget you. He was still sad for a while and stayed quiet for a long time. Then he looked up at me and smiled. Of course you won't. I'm unforgettable. We both <laughs> laughed and for a little while, we even let ourselves forget our sadness. We talked on the phone all night. And again, I didn't realize how long it had been until the sunshine came through my window and hit my eyes, just like it had that night on the beach. And then finally, we hung up. Some years later, when I was in college, I got a message from him. He said he would be in Japan for a concert, and if I wanted to go, he could get me and my friends a couple of tickets. I asked for five. Me and my friends went, and there he was. It was really nice to see him again. And then, just as the concert was about to end, his bandmates all left the stage, and the lights went out except for his spotlight, and he played a song on his acoustic guitar that no one had ever heard before. The song was called, To the Bravest Girl I Know, and it described everything that happened between us. I didn't tell my friends it was about me. It was special. It reminded me of that amazing night. And then the spotlight fell on me, and everyone turned to look. I didn't feel very brave then, with all those eyes on me. Come on up to the stage, brave girl, he said, and everyone clapped when they realized the song was about me. My friends were in shock. I took a deep breath and walked through the crowd. But all the fear left me and I realized, maybe I really am brave. On the stage, he met me in the middle, putting his guitar on the stand and turned off his microphone so that when we talked, it was only for us. Hey, I missed you. Of course you did. I'm great. He laughed and then, with the whole world watching, he kissed me right then and there. The crowd went crazy with applause. I don't know what'll happen, but for now, I'm just happy being his brave girl. <laughs>